Hello viewers, how are you? Welcome to my channel. Keloid is a very embarrassing condition for both male and females, especially for females. Today we are going to talk about keloid, its treatment options and its difference with hypertrophic scar. So what is keloid? If the scar tissue goes beyond the boundaries of the original wound and does not regress then it is called keloid. It is usually genetically and familially predisposed. The etiologies are repetitive trauma, irritation caused by hair, keratin and foreign bodies. It is very frequent in burn and tuberculous lesion. Usually black races are commonly affected by keloid. It is common in African Americans. It affects mostly young adults of ages between 10 to 30 years. As shown in the picture, ear lobe is the commonest site of keloid formation. But there are some other sites where the keloid can also be formed. These are chin, neck, shoulder, upper trunk, upper arms and lower legs. Keloid in the ear typically presents as a pedunculated mass. It occurs in the ear lobules after piercing. Interestingly, keloid around the ear may form at the mastoidectomy wound and at the end oral scar, thus resulting in stenosis of the external auditory canal. So how to treat keloid? There are different modalities of treatment. The number one is intralational steroid injection. Its success rate ranges from 30% to 100%. This intralational steroid needs to be injected every 3 to 6 weekly and it may require multiple injections to get the desired effect. So how does this intralational steroid works in case of keloid? This intralational steroid causes a decrease in fibroblast formation. It also decreases the local blood supply and thus it interferes with fibrosis. But beware, there are some risks of multiple repetitive injections of steroid. These are hypopigmentation, wound atrophy, telangiectasia, skin necrosis and granuloma formation. So intralational steroid should be judiciously used. Number two option is the surgery. If we do surgical excision of the keloid, the success rate varies from 54 to 93 percent. So the number three option is combined surgery and intralational steroid injection. In these cases, after surgical excision, the wound can be injected intralational steroid postoperatively to get desired effect. This is currently the best treatment option for keloid that is surgery followed by intralational corticosteroid injection. But there are some other forms of treatment for keloid. These are radiation therapy. The indication of radiation therapy in keloid is keloid causing disfiguring scar, keloid causing functional impairment, keloid resistant to less aggressive treatment. Like combination of surgery and intralational steroid injection, radiation therapy can also be combined with surgery. Button or pressure therapy is also used for the treatment of keloid. And there is another option, this is called silicon sheeting. The silicon sheeting increases the hydration of the keloid scar, thus improves the outcome. Apart from intralational corticosteroid injections, the new modalities of intralational injections have been uh, discovered. These are intralational antimitotic agents, bleomycin and intralational 5-fluorouracil. But these antimitotic agents cannot be injected in patients with pregnancy. In the end, I will focus on the difference between keloid and hypertrophic scar. Keloid is the scar that spreads beyond the original wound. But hypertrophic scar does not spread beyond the original wound. Hypertrophic scar is self-limited, but keloid is not self-limited. Hypertrophic scar is more commonly seen and it is more responsive to intralational corticosteroid. Like keloid, hypertrophic scar 
does not have any age and race predilection that it can occur in any race and in any age groups so that's all for today thank you for watching goodbye